Welcome back, and now we're on chapter 16, the final chapter in Math 114. And in this video, we're going to be covering two quick problems on line integrals. So let's, let's, let's just jump right into it. What is a line integral in the sense of 16.1? Okay, uh, in 16.1, what we're going to get is that we're going to get a function. All right. And then we're going to have a parameterized line. So, well, I shouldn't say line because line uh, pretty much indicates that we're just going to be going straight lines. That's not true. Uh, let's just say a parameterized curve. Okay. So uh, now what? In 16.1 then, uh, if we have a function, and let's say this function's name is uh, f, right? And it's f of x, y, z, right? So the inputs are going to be, it's going to be a function of some x, y's, and z's. Uh, and then we're going to have a parameterized curve. So that is r of t is equal to, uh, I don't know, whatever, uh, something, 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 right? And this is in three dimensions. Of course, in two dimensions, uh, we would just drop the at z, and then we would drop the last entry here. But I'm just going to say it in three dimensions for now. And, we, uh, and I think all the examples I'm doing are in two dimensions, so whatever. So... Let's take a look then at the two types of problems that will show up. Uh, the first one comes, uh, they both come from the textbook. Uh, the first one, 16, 1, 14. And the problem asks then, you want to find the line integral of f of x, y, z. So this is actually a 3D one. Is equal to x plus, or the square root of 3, divided by x squared plus y squared plus z squared over uh, the curve r of t is equal to t, 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 all right? Uh, the book writes it as ti plus tj plus tk, but uh, whatever, uh, you know, I don't like that notation at this point. And t goes from one to infinity. So how do we do this, right? A line integral is in, in, in the 16, 1.4 sense, when you have a function and a parameterized curve, uh, you, it's f of x, y, z, uh, ds over the curve, okay? And how do we evaluate this? We really evaluate this by doing f at r of t dotted with uh, the magnitude of r prime of t, dt, okay? So what does this mean? So let's calculate f of r of t, and this will make a lot more sense to you guys. So f, right, was root 3 over x squared plus y squared plus z squared, right? Well, essentially what we want to do is we want to plug in the components of r of t into the function. So what does this turn into then? This turns into root 3 divided by, okay, so what is x, right? x in r of t is t, right? So now we get t squared, okay? What's y? y is also t plus t squared. And then we got z, which is also t, plus t squared, okay? And now f of r of t is really root 3 over 3t three squared, all right? And now we want to find that r prime of t, right? And this is just a standard time, so I'm just going to actually erase. So there's a dot here. I'm actually going to erase that. Um, the magnitude of r prime of t, well, r prime of t is equal to... Uh, 1, 1, 1, right? So we take the derivative with respect to t, and now we've got to find the magnitude, and that's going to be equal to root 3. So my integral then becomes the integral of uh, root 3 over 3t squared times root 3 dt. And where are my t bounds? My t bounds are given right here, okay? And therefore, it goes from 1 to infinity. And now we just have to evaluate this integral. And to evaluate this integral, what do we get? Well, it's the integral from 1 to infinity. Um, so you get 3 over 3t three squared. Uh, these guys actually cancel. So it's actually just 1 over t squared. All right. And so that's really the integral of uh, t to the negative 2 dt, uh, which is uh, negative t to the negative 1 evaluated from 1 to b. And then we have to take the limit as b goes to infinity right uh prop or like improper integrals this is how we do it 
of course, uh, you guys should be familiar with this. And then that's going to be negative, so it's going to be the limit as b goes to infinity of uh, negative b to the negative 1, uh, which might be easier to visualize as negative 1 over b, and then minus uh, negative 1 to the negative 1. Well, 1 to any power is just 1, right? So it's the limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over b plus 1. And the limit as b goes to infinity makes this first term 0. And so this answer then, uh, this line integral is equal to 1. Okay, so that's uh, that's how you calculate it. Uh, and what's the, another, the next example? Well, okay, uh, so I'll zoom this out so you guys can like pause it or something. The notes are on my website anyways. Um, and the link to my website's in the uh, bottom of the video, in the description. So, okay, um, now what? Now, let's take a look at another video, uh, another example, 16129. And how does this one differ? Well, you're still given f of x, y, but now your curve is given like this, x squared plus y squared equals 4 from uh, 2, 0, 2, uh, 0, 2 uh, in the first quadrant. All right, so what do we have? Well, we, uh, oh, uh, I forgot to give the function f of x plus, uh, f of x, y is x plus y, right? So what's different? Well, we still have our function, right? We still have, so compared to up here, we still have a function given to us, right? f of x, y is equal to x plus y, but what is r of t, right? We don't know what r of t is. Well, now we're given just an explanation of what a curve is, right? And we have to parameterize this curve ourselves. So in order to do this then, Let's uh, draw, uh, draw a picture, which you want to do when you parameterize lines, okay? So we know what, uh, we know what x squared plus y squared equals 4 is, right? It's this circle with radius equal to 2, right? Radius equal to 2. And, and, and then uh, going from 2, 0 to 0, 2. So here's 2, 0, and here's 0, 2. And so we really only care about then uh, this part in the first quadrant, right? So we really only care about this line going from 2, 0 to 0, 2. And so how do we parameterize that? Well, for a unit circle going counterclockwise, the parameterization is going to be cosine t, sine t, from zero to two pi, all right? And that should be something uh, we should have discussed this. Uh, I didn't do it in a video, but in class, you should have discussed uh, at least the unit circle parameterization, maybe even way back in like chapter 13, if you remember that. So, uh, so we use this uh, example then to help us parameterize this curve. So what are we doing now? Well, we're only going, uh, we're going from two zero to zero two, so, uh, but we're still going counterclockwise, right? So this curve is still a counterclockwise curve, okay? So that means the, the parameterization is still going to be cosine t comma sine t, right? But now, uh, what else do we have? Well, we're not on the unit circle anymore. Our circle has radius two, okay? So that means we need to scale this guy by a factor of two, and we'll just multiply the two out in front. And then what are our t bounds? Well, our t bounds then go from zero, right? This is theta equals zero, and up here is theta equals pi over two. And essentially, t is acting like theta in our case. And so we're gonna say t uh, goes from zero to pi over two. All right, so now uh, we have then f of x, y, z, d, s is equal to f of r of t times the magnitude of r prime of t dt and okay so what then is f of r of t well here's our parameterization uh up there right uh we have x plus y but x is really two cosine t right this two has to be multiplied in so this is really equal to two cosine t and then y is going to be 
2 times sine t, right? So plus 2 sine t. Cool. Uh, what is the magnitude of r prime of t? Well, that's going to equal to the magnitude of uh, negative sine t comma cosine t, uh, or 2 times this. Right? And that's going to be equal to 2 times the square root of negative sine squared t plus cosine squared t, uh, negative sine t squared plus cosine t squared, but that's cosine squared t. And this in here then just becomes cosine squared plus sine squared, and so, or sine squared plus cosine squared, doesn't matter. So that's 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay? So uh, then our integral then goes from 0 to pi over 2, right? At the top of the page, you still see our t parameters. And then we get f of r of t, which is 2 cosine t plus 2 sine t times uh, 2, which is r prime of t. And so now I'm just going to factor out a 4 out in front, and we get 0 to pi over 2 of cosine t plus sine t. And if you evaluate this, this is going to be 4 times 2, which is going to be 8. All right. And yeah, that's it for 16.1. Then there's some bullshit with masses and moments that I'm not going to cover, and I will bet that your instructors will not cover as well. Uh, in three semesters, I've TA'd this course. Uh, no one has covered this these uh, line integrals, masses, and moments stuff. So I'm just going to leave that for what it is. Uh, there is a table, table 16.1, that has like a bunch of formulas anyways. But the big the big idea then is evaluating. Um, is, is evaluating these line integrals when you have a function and a parametrized curve. So next, we'll go to 16.2, where we're still dealing about line integrals. Uh, except now, instead of a function, you're going to be given a vector field. And this that's what trips students up, is they can't distinguish between 16.1 and 16.2. So I'll talk about the distinguishing in the next video. And yeah, uh, that's it for this one.